two things to prove in this screencast. Uh, one, so we'll let m be some positive real number. Uh, we'll prove that there exists a right triangle whose legs both have length m. Use this observation to show that the Euclidean formula for the area of a right triangle does not hold in hyperbolic geometry. So we just construct some segment AB, uh, and that segment has length M. And then we can drop a perpendicular to line AB. That's legit. And then ruler postulate lets us find a point C on that perpendicular so that BC has length M. So we can do this by ruler. We can do this because perpendiculars to a line through a point are unique. And we can do this by ruler. So this has length M. This has length M. That's a right triangle. And so here we are in hyperbolic geometry. And you're wondering why isn't the area of this triangle always 1 half M squared? Why? Why is that not so? Well, what's interesting here is that we know that area is bounded by some number a uh, little b. There's some upper bound on area in this hyperbolic geometry. choose m equal to b. Uh, or if b is very, very small, uh, choose m equal to 2. You're like, well, it's, it's 1 half, then 1 half times 1 half. No, don't do that. Uh, area is bounded by some number b. Choose m to be uh, equal to b. Then 1 half b squared is greater than B, uh, and that's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. So it could be that for certain values of M, it happens that 1 half times M squared is the area of the triangle in hyperbolic geometry. It could be. But it absolutely is the case that if this happens, then the 1 half m squared is greater than, than the actual area could possibly be. Okay, that, that's the rough idea there. Um, I should also take time to prove there exist triangles with equal bases and equal heights and different areas. Equal bases, equal heights, different areas. And the way we do this is very straightforward. We have some line L. That line contains some points. I'm going to call this Q sub 0 because we're going to run a string of Qs in a moment. And we're going to drop some perpendicular from some point P that's not on the line. Now, here's our plan. We're going to construct triangles where all of these are congruent. The distance between q sub i minus 1 and q sub i is the same all the way through to forever. Okay? Okay. So, so how do we run this? Each of these little triangles, P, Q sub I, Q sub I plus 1, each of these have this height and equal bases. So I argue 
that at least one of these has to have a different area than the others do. And so how do we run this? We run this as a proof by contradiction. We pretend, we suppose that the area of triangle P Q sub I minus 1 Q sub I, uh, that the, those areas are the same uh, for all I. We just assume that each of these has the same area. Well, eventually, you string all of these together, areas are additive, eventually you reach a place, uh, let's call it Q too big, where the area of triangle P, Q sub zero, Q too big is greater than the upper bound. I mean that that's just gotta be oh I'm so sorry, that's not the way I want to say that. I wanna say you reach a point where the sum from one to too big, the sum of the areas of those little triangles is greater than the upper bound. Because the upper bound is just a number, and the area here is a number. So whatever the upper bound is, I can take these little areas and just keep stringing them together. There comes a point where I sum a whole bunch of those together, and I get some number that should be too big. But the area of P, Q sub 0, Q sub 2 big, well, I mean, that's a triangle with an area. Area is bounded. So the sum of all these little areas has to be less than the upper bound, but but we can rig it so that the sum is bigger than the upper bound. And that is a contradiction. So where did we go wrong? We went wrong when we assumed that the areas were the same for all i. And if the areas are not the same for all i, then there have to exist triangles with equal bases, and equal heights, but different areas. And that's the idea behind the proof.